They say that revenge is a dish best served cold. But sometimes, revenge is a dish best served completely insane. We've all wished we could pull off the ultimate revenge scheme on the jerks who wronged us, but some folks took revenge to a whole new level. Here's a look at the most insane acts of revenge ever. Buying tank to slaughter Nazis. Maria Oktabriskaya was a telephone operator, the wife of a Soviet army officer, and the proud owner of a T-34 tank, with which she used to kill enough Nazis in World War II to earn her the title of Hero of the Soviet Union. Yep, it's true, after her beloved husband was killed during the war, Maria sold everything she owned in order to buy a T-34 tank, which she donated to the Soviet Union under the condition that she be the one to drive it. In her first battle, she earned a promotion and the awe of her comrades by eliminating numerous machine gun nests, artillery guns, and the Nazis who manned them, before fearlessly jumping out of her tank to repair it while under heavy fire. Unfortunately, after many battles and many dead Germans, her luck caught up with her in January of 1944, when she was killed while making yet more repairs to her immobilized tank. She did not, however, die before eliminating several machine gun nests, trenches, a self-propelled gun, and yet more Nazis for good measure. Robert E. Lee's home becomes a cemetery. During the Civil War, the nation's military graveyards filled up so rapidly that a call was put out to create a new national cemetery. Put in charge of this operation was Union Quartermaster Montgomery C. Meggs, a Southerner by birth who opposed secession and sided with the Union. And Meggs had a cunning plan. Without hesitation, he picked the grounds of Robert E. Lee's home at Arlington for the new Army Cemetery and ordered that the Union dead be laid to rest within a few feet of the front door of the man he blamed for their deaths. Working to ensure that the house was completely unlivable, Meggs ordered that dead soldiers should be scattered all over the property. It worked. Lee never returned to his ancestral home, which today serves as the final resting place for over 400,000 honored war dead under the name Arlington National Cemetery. Buying a company to fire one guy. In 1962, financial legend Warren Buffett decided to sell his stock in textile conglomerate Berkshire Hathaway, making an oral agreement that Hathaway chairman Seabury Stanton would buy the shares back at $11.5 per share. But when Buffett received the written paperwork, he discovered that Stanton had lowered the price to $11.38 per share instead. Insulted by Stanton's undercutting, Buffett responded by buying more stock instead of selling it. He said later that, quote, if that letter had come through with 11 and a half, I would have tendered my stock. But this made me mad, so I went out and started buying the stock, and I bought control of the company and fired Mr. Stanton. Lord Byron's Pet Bear An animal lover to the extreme, the poet Lord Byron owned many unusual pets throughout his life, but none was more beloved than his Newfoundland dog, Boson. When his university instituted a ban on dogs, Byron decided to get his revenge by exploiting a loophole. While dogs were banned, the university hadn't said anything about bears. Byron therefore adopted a full-grown bear, leashing him on a chain and walking him around campus. When questioned on what he would do with his new pet, Byron said, quote, I've got a new friend, the finest in the world, a tame bear. They asked me what I meant to do with him, and my reply was, he should sit for a fellowship. Don't mess with a man and his music. In March of 2008, singer-songwriter David Carroll was horrified to see the baggage handlers on his United Airlines flight carelessly throwing his guitar around the tarmac. Sure enough, his $3,500 710 Taylor was too damaged to play, but when he tried to get the airline to compensate him for the loss, they refused. It would prove to be a costly mistake for United. Carroll channeled his rage and frustration into a series of music videos subtly titled United Breaks Guitars, immortalizing the airline's callous indifference to its customers in song. Carroll went viral, amassing almost 20 million views and causing United stock to plummet by 10%, totaling about 180 million lost. Ouch. You broke it, you should fix it. You're liable, just admit it I should have flown with someone else Or gone by car Cause United breaks guitar Definitely don't kill the messenger. During the 13th century, Khwarezmia was a bustling, powerful, and super-rich empire spanning the majority of Persia. Seeing the opportunity for a trade partner, Genghis Khan extended a peace offer. Instead, the Khwarezmians killed his envoy, and when he sent a second envoy, they killed him too. The Sultan had fundamentally misjudged Genghis Khan's character. I was not the instigator of these tribulations. God grant me the strength to exact vengeance. Determined to prove a point, Genghis Khan invaded Central Asia with an army of 200,000 men, destroying the capital city, slaughtering and enslaving hundreds of thousands of its citizens, and pouring molten gold down the throat of the governor. When they had finished, 
Over a million men, women, and children were dead. Billionaire Body Slam. You've probably heard the story of how wrestler Terry Bollea, better known as Hulk Hogan, successfully sued and shut down the media website Gawker.com after Gawker illegally posted an incriminating sex tape showing Hogan with his best friend's wife. That would be pretty good revenge in and of itself, but there's an added element you may not know about. See, the lawsuit that took down Gawker was funded and orchestrated by Silicon Valley billionaire Peter Thiel, who had his own axe to grind with Gawker after one of the site's subsidiaries had published an expose in 2007 about Thiel's sexual orientation. Thiel saw the lawsuit as a chance not just to get some revenge, but to keep other people from being attacked in the first place by sites like Gawker. He told the New York Times that, quote, I saw Gawker pioneer a unique and incredibly damaging way of getting attention by bullying people, even when there was no connection with the public interest. Most of the people they attack are not people in my category. They usually attack less prominent, far less wealthy people that simply can't defend themselves. Even someone like Terry Bollea, who's a millionaire and famous and a successful person, didn't quite have the resources to do this alone. Talk about your atomic leg drop. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.